What's up YouTube? What is up Facebook? What is up world? Social media, America, Europe. Um, so, there's a song. There's a song. Uh, I'm making this video. It doesn't really fall. No, oh, you know what? I take that back. It's going to fall into the, uh, the life skills. The life skills uh, theme. The life skills uh, genre. And um, whatever that was, just on my lips, I don't want to know. Dead skin or whatever. Rebuke that voodoo in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so, it's a song. There's a song. It's by Ash. A S H E. And, um, it's called Moral of the Story. And excuse me for not looking at the camera. I do not want to make the habit of looking at the camera while I'm driving. It's really awkward and weird. And it seems like it's going to create a situation where I will put myself in danger on the road. And seem also kind of vain for other people to see me looking at the camera of myself on the dr during driving it's regardless of the fact that my ex-wife used to watch uh used to watch uh netflix and videos while she was um driving around and uh and while she was driving around and um and it was hilarious because she would be driving on the freeway and on the uh on the freeway and on the um you know and literally just watching videos on her phone while she's driving hanging from the dashboard or whatever but that's her she got away with it and always has and i don't hope she crashes but i would not do that and um so uh, but anyways, I, I can't play the song because, um, because it will throw YouTube all crazy. It'll make YouTube go all crazy and all, uh, you know, copyright laws and all that. But please go listen to this song. It's called Moral of the Story. It's by Ash. And man, I, sometimes I feel like the whole world has all the things that I figured out later in life already figured out. And you know how people say like they're late bloomers or whatever? Um, I, I, I've always felt that I was definitely a late bloomer, but I don't think it was because of the way I was raised or because of my personality. I think it was truly and honestly because I had a life-threatening injury at um, age 12 or 13, and it wasn't like someone put a gun. To, it wasn't like I, I. It was a brain injury, so um, I think what it did was kind of throw off my emotions and uh, throw off um, as my hat pulls out my hair. Sorry, um, and throws out. Uh, it threw off, it put me, from my perspective, I would in no way say that I'm better or worse because of it, but in my life, what it did, from my perspective, what it did was, um, it, it, it put me at like a physical state of life to where I remember being young and realizing the things that were important to me were stuff like shelter, food, water. And, and I didn't, I never, excuse me, I could never click with people emotionally or, or, or with conversation or with all those things that seemed so like later in life at ages, at age 17 or 18 or 19 or 20 or whatever, when I was like, I, I felt like 
because of not I felt like because I believe because of this injury and also because of some really violent situations that happened to me at age 18 uh, or like 19 or something like that I felt like I was already fully grown like I, I everyone else was going to school and talking about marriage and not that I had anything wrong with marriage but like I was like yo do I have food and water today like um you know, like I felt like I had already lived my life. I, 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 it was really a strange thing to happen, but there was other stuff and I'm not like, I'm not trying to be proud. I'm not trying to be superior. I just think the fact that my life, my actual, my actual f like physical safety got so badly threatened at, at such young ages that it, my whole priorities and perspectives got completely altered than what would be a normal growing experience for someone with my family and my family's, you know, it put, it put me personally in like some type of, like not ultra, like I said, I'm not saying this as like a pride thing or as a, um, or as a, uh, uh, as a, oh, whoa, um, or as, like, a pride thing, or as, as, like, uh, um, as, like, a pride thing, or as a, uh, as a, uh, as a, you know, I think I'm better, I'm just trying to be as honest as possible, it put my body in, like, almost like an animalistic state, to where I was so obsessed with like the daily, not even obsessed, just like, uh, that's what my brain took priority was the daily comforts and necessities rather than, you know, college and emotions and figuring out why. So I went through a big part of my life basically until I was like age 29 or 30 and I'm 32 right now where I didn't, I couldn't even, <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the giant Harley Davidson logo in, in the front of Las Vegas, and it just, to me, it looks like it's just like a giant Hell's Angels gang tag, which isn't really a bother to me. It's just funny right now. And, um, so, uh, I, um, so I, I, like, I, I, I don't think it was my parents specifically, even though I had issues with my parents growing up, but, like, I went through life being led by spirits and things that I shouldn't have that that made me who I am today and that's why I worship God and I praise God but like at the time even though the the result was in God's plan and a good thing at the time it's like how do you put it I went to prison and it made me who I was and that's what I, that's why it was a good thing but at the time it would have been you know, my physical and mental state would have been, I did not want to be in prison. I wanted to be out. I wanted to be, I wanted to be, you know, it, I would have been a happier person at that time. If I would have been, if I would have been, you know, in a beach with a million dollars surrounded by girls and my best friends. But what I went through at that time made me who I am today and that's part of life and that's so looking back it's like I was led for so long trying to please other people and looking for happiness in other people instead of making myself happy by my own needs and desires and um and and to the point where I was being led by addiction I was being led by complacency and anyways there's this song it's called The Moral of the Story by Ash. And like I said, I can't play it because, uh, because, um, because it will throw YouTube for a giant, like a loop. And, um, and, uh, and, um, earlier, Earlier, I was in this parking structure and I was sitting there pretending I was a police officer, thinking what if I would enjoy it as a job or not. But uh, it was I. And then I was thinking about different um, places, counties, and different sheriffs, and different places I lived in, different 
like degrees of how the uh, how people act but um but anyways the song she's really smart the girl who wrote this i imagine she's the one who wrote it because and if someone else wrote it then whoever wrote it it was really smart because in the song in the song <clears throat> excuse me in the song the three main parts of her chorus the three main parts of her chorus they that there's she she the main part that she says sometimes you think that you're in love but you're really just in pain and then there's another part that that says that says sorry some of these people whoever they are are just pathetic human beings they just drive around with nothing better than to do but to try to use witchcraft on people and i would think it would be hilarious if they all got grouped up into an auditorium and anyways i'm in las vegas so i'll end the story right there but um or i'll end my fantasy right there uh they're just so goddamn fucking annoying and stupid and um I, I mean, like like I said, I just cannot wait for the day that I, I don't know any other solution than they burn in hell. I mean, I bet that's the reason why God invented, created hell. But, um, and, and if they think that's a good thing, then they got another thing coming. Because, but anyways, back in reality, away from parasitic human beings, uh, whatever percentage they are. So in this song... Three out of the four courses, she says, are two out of the three or three out of the four. She says, sometimes in life, you think that you're in love, but you're really just in pain. And then the other one, she says, sometimes you think that you're in love, but you're really just engaged. And that is such a deep, deep lyric. And the whole song is just so, like, if you've ever been in a, in a relationship with basically a narcissist who who they they what these people do and I'm not saying I'm not hating on any group of people but like from my experience what these people do is basically they they find someone and I don't know if they start with evil intentions because I've never I, I, I've never lived reality in their brain or in their mind, but they find someone who has needs or some type of like low self confidence or like, and they fill them with that. Whether that's sexual needs or monetary needs or, or, or confidence needs or whatever it is, they, they, they find people with those needs that have those necessities and and they um they they fill them so as that is um it that i don't know like i wouldn't some people might say that that's like a form of pimping or like whatever but it's also a form of like uh, sociopathic like sociopathic behaviors so so um so so um so the, I, like I said I don't know if these people do this subconsciously or or whatever it is but I've been in multiple relationships with people and the sad part is one of them was the one that I thought was the love of my life was my wife and so I, I but with these women excuse me 100% women so it's like they they fill the needs that you have and that you, and, and you don't know that you deserve better so then they keep you at a level of, of like this girl wrote in the song, pain or suffering or whatever, and you don't even know. You and you're 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 this is your first time having these necessities or these desires fed, filled by another person, and you don't even realize that 
the, that the person's actually toxic. And the crazy part about it is these might even be possibly like the type of needs or desires that you should be filling yourself. Now I'm not talking about masturbation by any means, but what I mean is like monetary needs or, or, or you know, activities or, or, or things of that nature that this person may, now for what it's worth, my ex-wife showed me she's one of the, she's like one of the most she's one of the most um like substantial she's one of the most like how do you put it like she's one of the most like stair-stepping person in my life that like or not even that sounds rude she was one of the most like growth inspiring people in my life in ever to, to, to make me become a better uh, who I am today praise God hallelujah even though she chose to completely abandon me and betray me and live her own life etc 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 so it anyways go check out this song it's good and it's just and then the funny part is that you're really just engaged you may think you're in love, but you're really just engaged. And that can mean like, A, you're just committed to something because you think you need it or you think you should be doing it. Or B, it's like someone finally stimulates you. Someone finally stimulates you enough mentally to get your attention and, and, and spark your emotions. And, and you think that that's love when in reality, it's just being engaged with someone, mentally engaged. Now, for what it's worth in my story, I'll give it a credit to my ex-wife. She, I was head over heels with love, in love with her, and she would do anything for me. That's why I fell in love with her, really. She, 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 um, she, she, she would drive me places. She would buy me things. She would do. She would listen to everything I told her. And then we had a an enormous falling out. And 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 she just broke all that. She stopped taking. She like. But I'm talking. We live together and we're mar we're married by the Bible, by our word. We told each other we were married. And I told her if she wants me back at the house that she has to do it by the Bible. We never were officially male, married by the state of California. But she she stopped all of it. She stopped showing up to the places she said she would be. She stopped sh taking me to the places that we had pro that she promised she would get me there on time. <laughs> and she, st she stopped. Um, I mean, she stopped keeping... Like, at first she would... She would follow all her promises. She would keep her word, and she would, she would, uh, she would, um, she. And then she just stopped doing all of it. She started talking to other people behind my back. She started going on dating apps. She started, you know, doing all that stuff that made me fall in love with her. She broke it. I think what happened was, in a hundred percent honesty, she had some godly experience with me, just like I did with her. But instead of continuing to be faithful, she, she, she either fell out of love and made it slow and painful for me instead of just leaving, which is her choice. Or she did not, if she still loves me today and still wants me today, which I honestly don't know, then she, she, then she, um, she chose to um she chose to basically she did not choose to stay patient and stay loving and stay true which resulted in the failure of our relationship so at the beginning of our relationship when she was the most faithful and the most true and loving then things were good and for both of us. But then at the end, whether she fell out of love or, or decided to quit or whatever, she didn't keep her, like, she might not even known that she had a godly experience with me besides, because she, 
but whatever the fact, she did not stick to it. It didn't work out. So I forgot exactly where I was going with that because I believe this car that just passed me put some type, of, some type of memory spell on me, which is inappropriate and rude. And um, and so she, once she, I mean, for what, what I was saying, I was giving her justice. She she definitely kept her side of the bargain and I was more than just engaged by her mentally and 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 you know and but at the end that's what it became of this song so go check out the song it's a great song uh moral of the story by ash it's really great it's really good um hopefully it's, it's probably already got millions of plays I, I i it would be it would do good on the radio i don't know if it's been on the radio but much love and please comment like subscribe